Many people ask me where to find native plants for their gardens. Today we are going to visit with a self-taught naturalist who is going to teach us about how to propagate native plants. One of my very favorite spring native plants is our wild columbine. And this beautiful flower, has, the way it hangs down, the red color, the yellow pollen, it's just beautiful. And it's very hard to sometimes put plants in your garden that the pollinators like early on. And this one starts coming on late March and early April. But to tell you more about it, I'm going to let Linda Robertson, who is the self-taught naturalist I told you about, tell us about her propagation of columbine. Linda. Okay, well, uh, thank you, Rita. Uh, I would like to say about the columbine, too, uh, its red color attracts hummingbirds, and so you know when it is blooming, and the red buckeyes are blooming, that you will have plenty of hummingbirds. Uh, it is a very easy plant to propagate, has very tiny seeds. The seeds were collected uh, just as soon as they were mature in uh, the early summer. Mm -hmm. And I did seed uh, these flats right away, and they, they sprouted uh, in the fall. Okay. And they overwintered as young seedlings, and, and this is what they are today. Did they die back in the winter, like to nothing, and then they re-sprouted in the sp this spring? No, they, they don't. They, they stay green they stay, all winter? Yeah. I did not know that. They do. Or you can, you can collect the seed and then, uh, and then let them sprout in the spring. Okay. Let them germinate in the spring. Okay, so yeah. you planted yours immediately then. I did, but sometimes I wait. Okay. Now, if you already have columbine in your yard, this also self-seeds if you want to just let it go? Right, it will self-seed. It is not a really robust plant. You will have the plant for several years, but then it will self-seed, but that same plant won't come back. Okay, so you need to let it re-sow a little bit then if yes. you want to keep having columbines Right, yeah, don't yard. clip okay. all the seed heads off. That's good. Another of my very favorite spring native plants is Miami mist. And this one happens to be growing in a pot. And this Christmas fern is also in here. And actually the Christmas fern was probably in there first and the Miami mist just decided to join it. So here's what it looks like in the wild. And it's just lovely at the base of this tree, the way it goes right into those little coves and nooks and crannies there along the roots. So Linda, can you tell us how you get this in your garden uh, this is a it's a naturally occurring uh, native uh, wildflower and it draws many pollinators the other day i was out here uh, just looking and i saw at least three different kinds of native they were bees flies or wasps i couldn't really tell the difference they're hard to tell when they're so small but uh, there are many pollinators in the springtime and it just is occurring naturally everywhere around here Another plant that Linda has propagated is this golden Alexander. And what I really love about it, I also have it in my garden, in my yard, is that it's the host plant for the black swallowtail, which is a native butterfly to Tennessee. And it also provides a lot of pollen for and nectar for uh, bees, small things, pollinators in the early spring. It blooms very early, like late March, early April. And it also, uh, the third great thing about this is that it blooms in the shade and partial shade. Right. This is a, uh, this is a major wheeler uh, honeysuckle. It's our native honeysuckle. Uh, and it's a, a darker red than, uh, than some of the coral colored honeysuckles. Uh, we propagated this by layering. You can see the rock on the top here. I had a, uh, another plant and in the, uh, in the late summer, we just lay the, uh, we lay the stems over, and when you uh, uh, plant them in the ground and put a rock on top, then you can uh, propagate this plant by layering. Cool, and then you, when do you dig it up, actually, and put it in a pot? I leave it there, you know, almost a year. You know, well, until okay. you, you can tell when the roots are developed, it won't come out of the ground. Yeah, and then just kind of cut it off from the parent plant and mm -hmm. put it in some dirt, and right. there you go. Okay, that's cool. 
This is also a, a host plant, I believe, for the snowberry clearwing. Yes. And it's very, very attractive to hummingbirds. Our little um, ruby-throated hummingbird that comes through should be here any day now. It's here. It's here? It's here? Yeah. Cool. Well, you, um, and if you let it drape down, especially in front of a window, and you can sit in your house and look out at this, it's just, it's amazing. Two more beautiful native plants in spring are the purple phacelia and the lovely blue-eyed Mary right here, known for its, its brilliant blue flowers. And Linda is going to tell you a little bit how she propagated this. How did you, how'd you get these? Well, I found some seeds. Uh, these were some plants growing by the side of the road. And uh, I did collect the seeds and brought them out here and put them in pots. And they, it is a biennial, it is not, uh, not an annual. So if you have this flower this year, you will not have it next year, but it will shed seeds and then you'll have a lovely stand. Uh, so you'll have a continuous <clears throat> if, bloom if you if get you, year to year, if you let it go to seed. No, well, those seeds, you've got to get uh, plants that are blooming the next year to go to seed. So you really right. need two different communities of seeds. Okay, okay. But it's a beautiful plant that blooms in the spring, and I've seen lots of bees on this. Now, what advice, Lynn, did you have for people that <clears throat> they may see a beautiful plant in a fringe yard or along the roadside? Of course, we don't, we know, we don't dig up plants, but what about collecting seed? Are there rules, or what do you go by? Uh, if you do collect the seed, then you should only get 10% of the seeds that you see. Okay, so, so don't take the whole head you, off. No, you just, don't take the whole head off. Just shake head. a few um, right. seeds off in your hand. Right. Okay, and tell and, us about the Blue-Eyed Mary. Oh yeah, the blue -eyed, that? yeah, the Blue-Eyed mm. Mary is a beautiful plant that was considered endangered uh, for a while. It's a plant that blo also blooms in the early spring and the pollinators do love that plant. Uh, it, is, um, it is an annual and it does not like to be disturbed. So if you, I have given this plant to many people and they say it doesn't come back, but they probably mulch it or uh, probably it's mulch that uh, covers it up and then it won't bloom. But it's, it grows out in my yard. It, the seeds are scattered everywhere. So it needs sunlight to germinate. <clears throat> yes, right? but it's early, you know, right now, before mm -hmm. the leaves are on the trees, it'll be, it'll be gone in another month okay, or, or less. So which of these two are the easiest to propagate, in your opinion? They're both very easy. Okay. They just, <laughs> they okay. just need the right place. Right. You know, what's really amazing about this is that I find it on growing on tops of our limestone outcrops in the shade. Okay. Uh, these plants uh, over on some of my neighbor's property, uh, it's just beautiful in the spring with the, with the lovely lavender on top of the limestone mm -hmm. cliffs. Yeah, as a, yeah as a backdrop. Yeah, that would be, oh yeah, my goodness. It's stunning. Gorgeous. Okay, well, another way to propagate, we've talk about, talked about seed propagation, <clears throat> is division. And this is a dwarf crested iris that has been divided from other dwarf crested irises on your property, correct? Right. And this one now is a multiple. So mm -hmm. any reason in particular you chose to put, or is this one root? Or, or did you put several plants in this? Uh, this is one plant, but if you want to, you can pull it out and you can see the divisions. Okay. It will not hurt it. You can this see is making it, me nervous. <laughs> it grows like it grows like an iris. There's okay. a little violet in there. We'll pull yes. that out. Okay. But you can see the uh, the swellings there. Each of those will make a new iris. Oh, so, that's so cool. See the rhizome that's there. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And they're a lot easier to dig than, than right. They're big right iris. on the they're right on the top of the ground. You you don't have to bury them. They're like an iris. You can just throw them out and they'll yeah they'll yeah. grow. And in nature, we see these along stream sides and creeks, and mm -hmm. they just uh, kind of tuck themselves along the way, and it's just a beautiful uh, flower. And you can tell the, the typical mm -hmm. iris little bloom right there. 
um, just, just gorgeous. Yeah, it's a beautiful plant. This is Virginia Bluebell, and oh, what a show it makes in early spring. And not only for people, but for bees as well, and butterflies. Linda, tell us about this plant. Uh, the plant is uh, also easy to propagate. Uh, it makes a multitude of seeds. Uh, these are the early blossoms right here. They start out pink, and then they turn the sky blue color, mm -hmm. and they mature uh, Probably in another month, these seeds will be mature. And I collect the seeds and we, I plant them right away. They really don't need to stratify. I do plant them in flats with a, with a suitable grow, growing medium. And then I take a, a row cover, a very lightweight row cover, mm -hmm. and I put it over the flat and I set them outside. Okay. And let mother nature uh, work her magic with these seeds. Do you have to water or you just keep them uh, You really don't have to water them. They get enough water. Out in nature, they don't get watered. They just get what uh, Mother Nature provides. And so that is what I do, unless it's a, a celandine poppy, which needs, it's a hydrophilic seed and it needs to be a little damp. These seeds are not hydrophilic. They're just... They're just what they are. They're just what they are. Okay, right. okay. So Linda, you are affiliated with the Wilson County Master Gardeners and also Cedars of Lebanon State Park. Tell us about that affiliation, how those two organizations work together. Well, the Master Gardeners have been instrumental in uh, maintaining the butterfly garden at the park. It's a butterfly and native plant garden. They help maintain all year long. So Linda, tell us about the annual plant sale that the Wilson County Master Gardeners puts on at Cedars of Lebanon? Well, we do it in conjunction with, uh, with Cedars of Lebanon Park, and it's every May, and uh, we, we will have about, about 130 different species of shrubs, vines, grasses, uh, herbaceous plants, and I'm leaving one out, and trees. Yeah, trees. we'll have a lot of trees. <laughs> Are you the only group that propagates for that sale, or are there any other groups that also We're the bring only groups. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Thank for you. showing us your propagation methods today and showing us your beautiful spring plants, native plants, and we're just excited to get out there and get our hands in the dirt. <laughs> so Thank thanks. You. You've inspired us. <laughs> thanks. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. If you love gardening as much as I do, you'll want to subscribe to this channel. We showcase not only gardens, but gardeners as well, and the joy that the two of those mesh together can bring.